I just want to let you know on behalf of Waterford City and County Council and Waterford Chamber how honoured we are to be a 2020 Begin Together finalist and how excited we are to show you what our gorgeous town has to offer today. I promise we have a really exciting presentation lined up for you. But before we head inside to get that underway, why don't you take a look around? Surf and Lifeguard Training Centre here on the Lower Prom Inchmore, which is where we are this morning. And over the next 30 minutes or so, we are going to bring you just some of the many stories of Tremor's journey through COVID-19 and show you how our community really rallied together to show strength and resilience as we all navigate our way through these very difficult times. We've got sports clubs, community volunteers, we've got a variety of business owners, community group representatives, corporate powerhouses all joining us here this morning, some of whom are next to me already as firstly we put the focus on retail. So can I please introduce Catherine Keery of Red Lane Boutique, Claire Williams of Cove Stores and Taste More, and Sandra Power of The Lady Slip. Catherine, I will come to you first. Firstly, congratulations on the opening of your homewares and giftware boutique, which is a lovely Thank you. Of fashions. We're so used to seeing both in boutique, in the boutique in, in Red Lane and of course on redlane.ie as well. But just talk to me about how, how difficult and how challenging it must have been for the business to, to make its way through COVID. It, well, the Saturday that we closed, I will never forget putting the key in the door and, and walking away from the shop thinking, you know, wondering what was going to happen, thinking, you know, basically that we're goosed. How are we going to come back from this? How long are we going to be closed for? What's going to happen? Are we all going to die? Um, so the next few days, I can't even really remember what happened, but the online orders then started trickling in for gift vouchers. I, you know, local people buying things that I definitely know they didn't need. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it just kind of snowballed from there because it was a terrible time for us to close. We were at, you know, the time of the year where we'd be at our highest stock holding um, for communions, confirmations, weddings, occasions. Um, so literally every penny we have at that time of year is, is in stock. Um, so because of the local support and the camaraderie that we experienced, we were able to you know, keep ticking over and then open again after the three month period. Brilliant. Well, congratulations and continued success. Thank you very said, much. Both in the boutique and online, of course. Claire, more congratulations in order for you and the guys in Cove stores. You celebrated one year in business there recently. Um, Year one in business is, is tough in any climate, but never mind over this past year, these past 12 months. Just how has it been and, and how was it that you managed to, to make your way through it and do it so successfully? Uh, good morning. Uh, yes, it was a tough year, as you said, like first year in any business is tough, but then uh, throw COVID-19 in the mix and that certainly um, yeah, raised a few more barriers. But how we um, kind of, we got through, we really got through with the community. Um, the store itself is a, like it was a cornerstone of familiarity for people of Tremor. So when it reopened after being closed for quite a while, it kind of opened up uh, decades of memories. And we kind of, we wanted to really live like the nostalgia of Tremor and kind of bring our own new ethos of um, artisan, local and kind of eco-friendly like messages and products and and i have to say as a, as a cliff road native myself as well I, I certainly could feel that nostalgia and it's such a lovely addition to, to that part of the town and taste from where they talk to me um, we should be in the middle of the vitamin c festival at the moment which obviously had to be cancelled under the circumstances but what can we expect from taste from where yeah as you said today would have been the start of our vitamin c festival um so again taste from more is a group of locally um business owners, food and drink business owners. So we were uh, rallying together during COVID to plan this uh, fantastic food and drink festival. And 
unfortunately, with the further restrictions, it had to, it had to cease. So um, we will, we're planning, uh, we're looking at Christmas to see what we can do. Again, utilising online if we can't meet in person. And yeah, just continue to follow online and support online. Fantastic. And it's congratulations all around here this morning. Cassandra, you were the newest boutique owner in Tremor. Uh, some people might think you're mad opening a, a lingerie <laughs> boutique here in a relatively small town in the middle of a global pandemic. What was it that made you drive on with the business? Okay, so maybe a little bit of madness, <laughs> but um, do you know what? It's an idea that had been in my mind for, for quite a long time, and I really did feel that there was a gap in the market during these times where people are very conscious of sustain sustainability and of buying good quality products and well-fitting products. Um, the support that Tremor has always shown its business community and its people is incredible and I have found that so much when I pitched this idea very casually to Catherine from Red Lane and she said just go for it. I've received so much support. Tremor is such a hive of activity and it really has become a destination for people. We've got Red Lane, you've got Satina is at the other side of my shop, you've got Bijou Bridal. There's so much to see and do and buy now when you come to Tremor that I kind of felt it was a little bit of a no-brainer for me because I've always been such a huge advocate of shopping local that I really felt that I wanted to put, put these roots down in Tremor. And I suppose the first few weeks have, have really shown the true colours of the people and the, and the community because they have really rallied behind me. Fab will continue to success to, to all three of you. Um, and we want to take a look at some of the incredible community groups that operate here in Tremor and provided really vital and valuable services to the community over the past number of months. Uh, before we're joined live by our next guests, we hear from Mary O'Reilly, who is a Waterford Hospice volunteer. She's also a skilled quilt maker, and she put those skills to use throughout the COVID pandemic um, by making and hand-making and selling reusable face masks. This was all done with the support of her two sons-in-law as well and together they donated 100% of the sale price to the Irish Hospice Foundation. I decided to make face masks for hospice because I'm a member of the Tremor Hospice Support Group and each month we ran a coffee morning in the hostelries in Tremor uh, to raise funds for the hospice but of course when Covid came along that all stopped and uh, I was quite aware that there was no funds being raised for the hospice even though they continued the great work they do because terminal illness, as we all know, didn't go away and they needed the funds to continue their great work. There was a lot of talk about masks at that stage and I decided to make masks and sell them online and there was uh, a lot of costs involved in that so uh, my sons-in-law Declan Furlong of Evoke and Noel from O'Neill's Bar and Restaurant very kindly covered all expenses so that 100% of the sales could be donated to a hospice. We were delighted to support Face Masks for Hospice and Mary because it's, it's a great initiative and uh, we're more than aware that the, the funding and support that hospice normally gets through the coffee mornings and that um, didn't happen this year. We normally hold one here in, in O'Neill's but uh, we didn't, they didn't get to that this year obviously. Um, it's a great cause and we, we try and support anything local and whether it be the Irish Club or Tremor Tidy Towns, anything that's a local initiative we, we always try and get behind. Well, I'm delighted to be able to say that we raised over six and a half thousand euro because when I started this initiative, I hoped to raise maybe five or six hundred euro. So this is a big surprise to me and I'm very, very happy to have donated that amount to the hospice. And I'm continuing to make masks uh, on my website, theowl1.ie, uh, where two euro from the sale of each mask is being donated to the hospice. I can proudly say I, I own and wear a number of Mary's face masks. I know they're still selling very well online as well, and, and the money's going to a cause so close to so many of our hearts. Um, so just returning to our group here, I'm delighted now to be joined by Tom Cullen of Tremor GA and Chasty of Tremor Tidy Towns and Quish's Super Value and Mary Morrissey of Tremor Community Care Meals on Wheels, all of whom played a vital role in our community, keeping it going throughout the pandemic. Tom, I'm going to come to you first. Um, while the GA Club in itself you know, couldn't operate as normal, we're so used to seeing hundreds of, of children and members of all ages in Rivers Town, both training and playing matches, um, you know, whether it's hurling, camogie or football. But 
the ethos of the club really exemplified itself throughout the, the pandemic and, and you really rallied together again as we said those members of all ages worked to help some of the more vulnerable members of our community just talk to us a little bit about what it was that you did well, I suppose we're, we're the only GA club in Tremor in a big community, so we, we see ourselves as a big part of the community. We're very lucky to have the games that we have and the facilities that we have. So as part of our long-term strategic plan and just the way the, the ethos of the club is to give back to the community. So we're quite involved with things like tidy towns um, and uh, we'd run clubs, we run camps for the kids during the winter, the summer, the autumn, and those things work really, really well. But I suppose there was an opportunity for us to step up as a volunteer group during COVID and pandemic. And uh, we did that just by helping out, by offering our services to do food deliveries to people's houses. And we did that through our partner, Super Value. And then what that sort of grew out of itself, and sorry, typical phone, that grew out of itself. And we ended up doing that with locally with the Waterford County Council. So uh, it was a great project. We were really grateful to be asked to do it. And we really enjoyed doing it. And uh, just to have a chat with an elderly person who doesn't see someone during the day is a... Uh, it's a powerful thing, and that's very important to yeah, us in the club. Absolutely. Um, and I want to come to you next. You've been an integral part of Tremor Tidy Towns almost since the off, and, and sort of driving force behind the work that the group does. Um, the town, I have to say, I think I can speak for almost everyone in Tremor when I say it, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And that's apparent now more than ever that so many of us are staying that bit closer to home. And, you know, we're a, we're a tourist town, and it's such a beautiful, warm welcome to those who are coming to staycation here in Tremor. Just how did you manage to keep the work going throughout the, the lockdown and the, the pandemic in general? So um, we have a fantastic bunch of volunteers and I suppose when lockdown came, we locked down, we protected ourselves. But the minute uh, restrictions were eased, we got out there and we reduced the number of, of uh, volunteers going out um, and uh, we continued the work. The Sioux Valley National Tidy Towns competition um, obviously was cancelled, but we wanted to, uh, the town to look as well for the locals and visitors when the time would arise to, uh, for the town to be open for visitors. So um, one of the, the um, projects I suppose for 2020 was a mural um, which uh, we commissioned with a uh, local artist Lisa Murphy and uh, this was a theme of bi on biodiversity and it was um, I suppose, educational and colourful in a time when uh, a bit of colour was needed, uh, go, you know. So one of the positives out of uh, the pandemic was that people um, in the town appreciated the work that we were doing and appreciated like when they got out to stroll around that they appreciated their environment. So we actually gained volunteers this year, which was amazing. We're absolutely delighted. So that's a positive out of it. Absolutely. Um, and we're thrilled to say as well that many thanks to, to Bank of Ireland and the Begin Together Awards, there is a fund available to Tremor, some of which will be going towards the sensory garden that I believe is in the works. Just tell me a little bit about what we can expect from that. Yes, yeah, so a sensory garden, garden is especially uh, designed for people with uh, learning, um, physical and uh, intellectual disabilities, um, visual impairment and autism, special needs and for everyone to go and enjoy. So it's a, a tranquil place that people can enjoy um, I suppose, the nature. Um, so I suppose the aim is to, uh, in the garden, is to have like um, low shrubs, uh, water features, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, play uh, sculptures, um, wind chimes, so all that, that for, so that all the special needs people can enjoy um, the Perfect. environment and, you know, that it's calm. Yeah. So we were lucky to have Dr. Jane Russell O'Connor um, involved as a volunteer. So she is, um, what she's doing is uh, using, uh, she's going to um, engage with the third and fourth year st uh, students in WIT and um, they're going to for the first yeah for the first semester they're going to design a garden so they're going to come out and test the soil and measure the area and design fantastic. a garden for us so we're so delighted and looking forward to working with them brilliant it sounds fantastic really excited to, to see it in obviously with the competition the Bank of Ireland and thank them so much. Of course, well. absolutely. Um, it is certainly going to be a great addition to the town. Um, Mary, finally to you then, the Meals on Wheels service offered by the Tremor Community Care Centre, it was vital in, you know, in terms of delivering meals throughout the lockdown, but did you see an increase in the demand for it given that so many members of our community were cocooning throughout the pandemic? Absolutely. We went from probably around 45 when we began, you know, before COVID, we went up to about 80. Uh, currently, we're still on about 57. 
um, and that's just ins and outs, natural. Uh, some people get sick and some people, you know, so mm. you, have, you keep going. But um, our initial uh, priority was to keep our core business going in the centre. And uh, unfortunately for us, we had to leave some of our services go for our older citizens because of COVID. And uh, that was all to do with, you know, distancing and so on. And that, uh, for that, we're actually very sad that that has happened. But the core business is working away it was as I said uh, absolutely essential when we took decisions in the beginning because some places did sh shut down we were in touch with several means of wheel centres around the country some had to shut down and uh, we said if we can at all we're just going to try and keep it going so we changed a lot of things we changed from sending out hot meals to cold that sounds funny but it meant that we could send the items out in uh, disposable items uh, rather than have dishes coming back cross contamination and so on we we reduced our drivers uh, thankfully we had a core of drivers who stayed with us um, on you know age group uh, um, and so on and uh, then at the moment we have 36 drivers back helping again which is fantastic and uh, we hope to have more back on again because we have three routes back on systems. So. Absolutely and am I I'm right in saying there's a, about 1800 meals per month? Are, are well at the height we had 1800 in April um, uh, we, to date we have sent out 11,000 meals since January um, where it would have been about nine last year so it has gone up considerably so um, yeah it's fantastic absolutely yeah. well it's you know as we said such a vital service to the community not just mm. in terms of delivering meals but of course being a touch point to the community mm. as well and oftentimes uh, for you know for somebody maybe who may not have seen anybody else on that particular day um, before we welcome our next guests take a look at this I'm Grace O'Sullivan, Green Party Member of the European Parliament for Ireland South. I've lived in Tremor the best part of my life and it's obvious to anyone coming here the great gift of Tremor is the great outdoors. It's the beating heart of our magnificent paradise. When I came home from Brussels to work from my kitchen table during the COVID-19 pandemic, the outbreak of it, I was able to enjoy get out and about around Tremor back down to the special area of conservation behind the beach, the back strand, the beach itself, the rock pools, out to Newtown Cove, into the woods at Newtown Cove. It was just wonderful and wonderful to engage with the community of Tremor as I did that. Tremor is good for your social health, for your mental health and for your physical health. So I am delighted that Tremor has been recognised and appreciated for what it is. The love of my life, Tramor, the big beach, Tra Amore, the love of my life. I think Grace echoes a lot of us there, and Tra, tra Amore as well. I like that. I hadn't heard that one before. Um, I know our next guests will agree as well because you're all lovers of the great outdoors here in Tramor. Um, can I welcome, please, Lola O'Sullivan of the National Surf and Lifeguard Training Centre here in Tramor, Gary Hunt from Tramor AFC, and Anna Dawson of Tramor Golf Club. Lola, I'm going to come to you first. Um, first of all, thanks for facilitating us here this morning. What a fantastic venue. Um, but we are so lucky in Tramor. I mean, we have a, a, an amazing beach, a myriad of swimming coves, some beautiful outdoor and recreational spaces that we've been able to use. Just how lucky are we in Tramor to have those at our disposal as we as we keep saying, navigate our way through these really difficult times? Well, I suppose for a lot of people in Tremor, they forgot uh, what, what the beach and what the beauty is that we have around us. So people took to the water. And you know, the, the saying in Tremor is that when you get into the water, you lose your mind and you find your soul. So during a very difficult COVID period, a lot of people started to uh, lose their mind and find mm. their soul. There were places like Newtown Cove and the Gillamine, which in the end became so famous that Catherine Thomas came down to, to do her show yeah, uh, in Tremor, <laughs> which was wonderful. But just the beach, the sand hills, it's the escape from everything. It's the ability to enjoy the beauty that is around us. It's about getting into the water. And we were really, uh, we're so lucky here in Tremor because there's just so much to the ocean. It's not just about swimming, it's surfing, it's windsurfing, it's kite surfing, it's all those things. And I suppose 
for, during COVID, I, we became aware of the difficulties that those businesses would have uh, going forward. So as a lifeguard training centre, we were able to embrace that and work with them to ensure that people got back into the water very fast. And on the first day of, of opening, um, three of our SIF schools were back in the water and they would say that business went from strength to strength, which was absolutely wonderful. And it gave people children, adults, every, everybody, an opportunity, not just from Tremor, but from everywhere, to experience the beauty and the, the fantastic experience of jumping into the water. Absolutely. Um, Gary, you're another stalwart here in Tremor, um, and a highly acclaimed soccer coach as well. Now, obviously, you couldn't coach the teams that you usually work with throughout the, the pandemic, but you were putting your skills to use online. Just tell me about that. Yeah, so obviously, when um, lockdown hit Trizam, we, we had a little bit of a challenge that kids had uh, regular activity of coming down to us to play football week in week out and they had this all of a sudden where they didn't have that that outlet for themselves you know so we as a group kind of had a chat over whatsapp and things like that and and try to identify ways of of maybe keeping the guys active because we didn't know when we were going to come back and guys were at the end of their seasons were they going to play them were they not so i was unfortunately the unlucky one who got tasked with um put myself out there to but um, I loved it as well. You know, it was great crack for myself to get to give myself some routine every day. So for for four or five weeks, we we decided to run a little daily kind of challenge for for the players uh, at home to to try and practice themselves and give them something to do with the football. Uh, so we we rolled with it. As I said, four or five weeks we got out of it, and we were getting some fantastic engagement from the players. And and we even done a, a Mother's Day special one, which we got some of the mams to to send us in some clips and we rolled with those, which was really good. Um, so over, over those few weeks, it was great to see the kids having some sort of outlet before, obviously, we, we returned back in, in June or July to, to be able to play. And we made a very good video uh, with the help of all the club members with, with regards to safe return. And, and now we're back and you know, kids are getting to play again. So it really was giving them something because ultimately they couldn't see their friends. Um, it was difficult for them all. So football was really, one of the very few things that they have, and because most kids have a football at home, so giving them that little bit of uh, extra little challenge at home to, to maybe practice with their friends uh, through video, of course, but uh, it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable as a club, and we, we're proud to be able to, to say, because we have, a, we have a quite a large following on social media and through the town, that uh, we reacted and we were, we were proactive in how we approached the, the way lockdown happened for Absolutely, I, and I think that's, that's just that's evident across the globe and everything you do, I have to say, you really are a fantastic part of the community. Um, Anna, international Irish golfer and, of course, from more Nate as well. First of all, I hear you shot a course record over uh, COVID. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, it was actually just one of those days. I didn't start off too great and then came on to the fourth hole and just all happened and then I came up on to 13 I said to my playing partner Rachel I was just like I think I could be getting the course record here and she was like Anna forget about that just concentrate on the game and um, their playing partner is very supportive and it was great to play with them. Amazing um, and tell me golf clubs were one of the, the first sporting facilities to be able to reopen post lockdown how important was that for players of all ages for both their physical and mental health? Yeah, it's really good to get out in the fresh air and um, get a break from inside because you're all, everyone's locked up, couldn't leave or do much during lockdown. But um, yeah, I was lucky enough, I have a big enough garden, so I was able to practice my chipping and I was in the field setting a few long shots. So um, it's great. To, there's a great buzz up in the club now, seeing as it's all open back up. It's even hard to get on the timesheet now. Absolutely, I believe it is. Well, listen, I hear the course is looking absolutely spectacular up there at the moment. Um, and I also hear as well that Tremor Golf Club made a very generous donation recently to Tremor Meals on Wheels. So credit to everybody up there and congrats to you again on the Thanks course million. record. Um, so we've got two more guests to welcome shortly, both from two corporate powerhouses that have roots here in Tremor. But first of all, let's take a quick message from Waterford Chamber CEO, Gerald Hurley. From arts and foods to leading industries such as Nearform, the developers of the HSE COVID-19 tracing app, Tremor offers much more than the sand and the surf it's famed for. Riverstown Business Park is a strong industrial hub housing over 40 businesses and hundreds of employees. While along the main street, you'll come across a diverse range of businesses from award-winning food producers such as Seagull Bakery and Meze to bridal boutiques, fashion houses, arts and crafts, healthcare, and much more. Tremor has been deeply affected by COVID-19 because it's primarily a tourist town. Economically, it's been badly hit, particularly in the hospitality sector, which is so prevalent in the town. 
However, with challenges come opportunities, and COVID certainly has unearthed plenty of those. We all strive to achieve a better quality of life. Tremor provides that in abundance, with beaches and outdoor activities at your fingertips, great schools, affordable housing, and only 11 kilometers from Waterford City and 90 minutes from Dublin. It's no wonder Tremor has become the choice for so many professionals looking for the perfect work-life balance. Well, Tremor certainly provides that in abundance. And Gerald mentioned Nearform there. They are an international software solutions company that is based here in Tremor. They're also the developers of the COVID tracker app that's helping to keep our country safe. But Nearform's Larry Breen joins me this morning. Um, Larry, first off, I want to touch on that work-life balance that Gerald mentioned, because I know that it's something that Nearform founder Kino Madin was so passionate about when bringing the business to Tremor. Just talk to me from your perspective about that. Yeah, so Keen and myself are, are both local lads, uh, born and raised here in Tremor. Um, what we found is we didn't want to go to the big cities and, and chase those kind of jobs. We like the whole balance of being here, of not sitting in traffic in the morning, being able to walk into the office, come down to the beach at lunchtime. You know, getting that sort of balance right. We work super hard. You know, we see the you know nations working harder and harder as we go forwards. What we need to be able to do is make sure that, as a consequence of, of that, we're able to get out and actually enjoy fresh air. And tell me about the COVID Tracker app then, obviously, and the work that went into developing that. Yeah, the COVID Tracker app has been a phenomenal success. Uh, fundamentally, it's what we do as a business, so accelerated solution delivery. When the HSC approached us to obviously help the community and get everybody up and running and, and protected and, and give them a chance to fight against COVID, we obviously jumped on the opportunity and, and obviously worked with them. Uh, we've now been able to extend it globally, so we're now across you know, multiple continents and, and continue to roll it out. It's been brilliant. It's incredible to, to think as well that that uh, was started here in Tremor, So Started here one Saturday morning back in March and, and it's uh, a worldwide success now. Brilliant and it's a, a credit to, to Tremor. Um, I'm joined also by Michael Flynn who is the Executive Chairman of FLI Global. They are an environmental solutions company that operates worldwide and the group head office is here in Waterford. And Michael, you're a Tremor resident and as we said, your, your global head office is, is here in Waterford. Um, but I think it might make more sense maybe to some of your industry peers if you were based in Dublin or London or even the States given that the amount of international work that you do. But again, is it quite simply because of the work-life balance? Uh, the business was founded in Waterford back in 1989. We traveled from here to China and back on, 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 uh, often in the, in, the, in the same week. Uh, Tremor and Waterford is, is, a, is a great place to live. It's, it, it's, a, it's an anchor in, uh, when, you're, when you're traveling around the world. It, it's, uh, it's great to see foreign places, but it, it's, it's great to have a, a grounding and an anchor, know where home is. Uh, um, we've raised our family here. Uh, all the amenities are, are available, not least the beach here and the walks and, and uh, the new nature park, which thank, thankfully we were invited to get involved in some years ago. And it's great to see uh, you know, that old um, landfill be recovered and, and made safe and used now to, uh, to a great extent by walkers and joggers. And uh, the park run takes place there, uh, which, is, uh, which is wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I have to say, I, I, I run that loop a couple of times a week myself, <laughs> yeah. and it, is, it really is a fantastic addition. And, yeah. and exactly as you said, you know, FLI Global was, was part of, of making that happen. Yeah, we, we were part of, uh, we, uh, part of our activities is in remediation of land uh, uh, from uh, contamination, whether it's landfill or, uh, or industrial uh, activities. And uh, we sell that service and those expertise uh, around the world. So it was great to be involved in the recovery of, uh, of the uh, park area here, here, here in Tremor. Uh, and Kilbarry as well in, in, in Waterford. That's as close as we've ever got to home in terms of our... Uh, uh, selling our services, but um, we are very proud to be uh, based in Waterford. Uh, we have uh, you know, bases in France, in China. Uh, we work globally, um, but everything starts here, and the uh, the headquarters is in is in Waterford. And we're very proud to have both FLI Group and Nearform based out of Tremor here. So, judges, that is just a flavour of what we have to offer here in Tremor as we all work together to, to make our way through these very difficult times. Tremor is 
a beautiful place. It's vibrant and it's built on community and creativity and, and fun and, and a warm welcome always. And we would love to have been able to bring you to Tremor and show you around in person. And hopefully we will get to do that someday. But first of all, uh, for now, uh, we want to first of all thank you again for, for staying with us this morning. Um, and tonight being Culture Night, we have just a special treat for you as we cross to Lafcadio Hearn Japanese Gardens here in Tremor, where local harpist Anya McCarthy Kent will play us out with Shlivnama, Gurv Mahagwev, Agaslan Thank you. 